Okay, so welcome to How to You View Deck Profile 7 Legacies Part 2. So in this video, obviously, I'll be going over part two. Um, I just want to apologize and say there won't be a side deck for Seven Legacies. It's something I think I failed to mention. I think I mentioned that in part one. I'm sorry to say this. There's no side deck for Seven Legacies. This is a deck that um, currently it's in limbo, as I think I've said before. There is no side deck. Um, but in this video, I'll be talking about you know the goal of the deck. And I'll be going over the several plays that this deck has and uh, play starters, whatever. So you'll get to see a bit of that, okay? And I think I'll, I'll end it there. So, okay. So here, I'm gonna talk about the goal of the deck. So we have Abida, Rebuilder of Worlds. So let's read that effect. Cannot be normal summon slash set. Must be special summon from your hand by there being at least eight or more link monsters with different names on the field or in the graveyards. You cannot special summon other monsters or turn your special summon this card. This card special summon cannot be negated. If this card is special summoned, shuffle all other monsters that are banished or on the field and in the graveyards into the decks. Neither player can activate cards or effects in response to its effects activation. As you can see there it has 3,500 attack and 3,500 effects. So this is a very strong card and its summon can't be stopped. This is the be all and end all, you know, it's our La Vida, Rebuild of Worlds, as I say there. And this is your true win condition in Seven Legacies. Um, the whole design of this card is to break your opponent's soul. I must break you. You want to break them, you know. That's the whole design, uh, the, whole, the whole design of your win condition. Most decks, with the, the win condition I built on this deck, it's a little bit different than your conventional win condition. It's a win condition designed to break their spirit and designed to basically rinse, repeat the same process over and over again. Like an anime protagonist, like a hero, in like being caught in a video game or being caught in a time warp, you basically just rinse, repeat the same combo all over again. So, you know, the aim is, you know, you summon this after you've done all your combos. They feel that you're just about to win. You summon this, you reshuffle everything. You just go back to state one. You go back to slate one, back to the beginning to rinse, repeat the entire combos and everything you've just done all over again. And that's what makes it so terrifying. Okay. So that's essentially it, and that's all I've got to say about the goal of the deck. Let's go to the next area of cards that I'll be talking about. So we'll just move. So I'll be going, I'll be talking about now World Legacy, World Chalice. So as you can see in front of you, we have World Legacy, World Chalice on the center, and we have four cards surrounding it. So you have World Legacy Memories, World Legacy Succession, World Legacy Survivor, and World Legacy Lands. So as when you will be playing, so this will be the Chalice side of things when you'll be playing um, you know, the Seven Legacies and these are gonna be your four key cards that you're going to generally want to be searching during your first to second to third turns. These are gonna be the cards that are going to be coming up and gonna be one of the most useful cards that you're gonna be using on the regular. So when you have a Chalice start, these are definitely the four cards you need to be aware of. These are your four targets. It's going to be your four really important cards. And so I think I went over there. I, you know, you read them in part one. So I'm not really going to go over them here in uh, part two. But generally, that's about it. Okay. You're with me so far? Cool. Let's go to the next slide. We'll go to here. We have the Mech Knight start. So we'll go with Mech Knight of the Morning Star. So you see the Magnet of the Morning Star, obviously. I talked about its effect in part one. So anyways, we see the four cards surrounding it. So we see World Legacy, uh, World Arc. We see Mechnite Avram. We see World Legacy Survivor once again. And we see World Lands. So when, you're, when you have the Mechnite Star, these are the four cards you're generally going to be wanting to have, wanting to get on your um, side of the field. Now, the World Legacy World Arc is interesting as this is going to allow you to protect your links from destruction. 
Um, the lens is going to be good as well. You're going to want to have that battery protection, um, especially as well in your in the next side stocking manners of things. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And you can also use the chalice, obviously starter that I showed you at the beginning with works with chalice with memories to end to go into this mode. To you can go from the chalice start to bleed in into the mech knight start as we can see here. So definitely loads of things we can go into, loads of uh, diversification, loads of different uh, aspects we can go into there. Alrighty, let's go to the next starting phase we can go into is Orcus. So we have Orcus here and so here is our linchpin card. We have Gyusu, the Orcus Mech Knight. So this is classed as a Mech Knight card, but it is also a Orcus card as well. And you can be summoned with word legacy memories. So that's a very important and very important you take note of that as well. As your linchpin card, these are the four cards in general that are going to be important when you summon Girsu, the Orcus Mech Knight. So you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be relying on those link summons to make Galatea, and you're gonna be you're gonna be setting most of the time your Orcus Crescendo. Your Orcus Crescendo is gonna come again to help you search those dark machines, like the World Legacy Lance that we mentioned mentioned earlier in the previous um, slides as well with the Mech Knight start and the Chalice start and then you'll, uh, or the World Legacy Arc. You'll have the Dindiris which you can put on top of Galatea. This can be summoned with the Orcus, uh, Orcus play that you're going to be, Orcus Moth which you've sent with Gyusu. And then you have the World Legacy's World Legacy Heart. World Legacy Heart is going to be extremely useful sometimes as it's going to mean that any one of your linked, uh, you know, monsters are protected from battle once as you just need to banish this from the graveyard instead if a link if a linked monster be to throw back and just banish this instead so it gives you that versatility gives you all the rage gives you all the things that you can do there fantastic and a great card overall let's see if we have another um let's go to the next slide we have there we have our crusadius start right here so with the Crusadius start that you're going to be having, things are going to be a little bit different. Things are going to be a little bit nice. So you start with the Crusadius start, you start with Crusadia Magius. Obviously, you special summon with Crusadia Magius, the, the monsters, the effects. And the four cards that you're going to be having there is Crusadia Boria to protect your Crusadia monsters. You'll have Crusadia Crawler, which is again going to allow you to add any World Legacy card again, giving you that consistency and having you bleed in into the other archetypes to get your World Legacy Survivor, World Legacy Heart, you know, all that jazz, and we're bleeding into that. We have uh, Crusadia Equimax, as you can see there, um, which will allow you to give that, um, you know, that face-up Omni Negate. It can, it can negate, up, you know, face-up card, which is great. And we have a question mark. This is a mystery card that it can be anything. Um, it could be a Monster Re, it could be a World Legacy Succession, it can be anything here. But Crusadia has that element of surprise, so there can always be something there that we don't know. Okay, and I think I've covered, you know, the starts that you can have with this deck, and that's about it. Let's go to the next section of this video. Okay, so we're going to be going over just this this part here, um, just before we go to the next section, is you can see Will Chalice, Guard Dragon. So you see Guard Dragon here, and Guard Dragon really is going to be your defensive card here. So, World Chalice Guard Dragon is going to really come into play when your cards are linked. So, as its effect states there, you know, when, car when your cards are linked, you know, you can protect your cards from targeting as long as it's in the hand, which you'll be able to add to yourself, as you can see with the four cards surrounding it, World Legacy Heart. Again, you'll use Orcus Crescendo again to add World Legacy Arc or World Legacy Lands, um, which you can see there. So the uh, World Chalice Guard Dragon is going to be one of your key cards that's going to be one of your best defensive cards in Seven Legacies. Okay, and that's about it. I think I've covered all the, 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 you know, the key cards, the support. So let's go to the next section, which is Honorable Mentions. So obviously I've been stating like, so now in Honorable Mentions here, sorry, I'm going to be stating the ways that, different ways you can be adopting Seven Legacies. So obviously there are several routes you can take this deck to go to a more modernized version which could uh, fit in today's climate, rather. But although these routes are available to you, and although they're there, there are some weaknesses. For example, you can go the Guard Dragon Legacy route, 
slash dragon link. Unfortunately, with this route, we have a bit of a problem. We're missing a few of some key links are banned. Maybe you could um, use the, you know, use some uh, good dragon link combos. Maybe you could go god dragon route there. It's completely in shambles there. This is a version of a deck which I did try before. Um, before settling to the version I have now, maybe it could work now. Maybe with with the you know the dragon support we have now, I don't know. It's hard to say. There is some potential there. Whether it's um, you know competitive potential, I I really don't know. Um, that's something that is yet to be discovered. Maybe you can discover that for yourself. Um, the next section we have here is Orcus Legacy Scrap Dino. So obviously you can do that because we have cards that came that have come out, you know, this year as well, that have been re-released, you know, and this is a, this is a thing that can be done, because um, last year we had Scrap Dino being released, we had Orcus Juice being re-released, as you know, in Mago as an Ultra. So this gives us access to the Orcus combo, but we are still missing a lot of Orcus pieces. So. Possibly there is a chance there. With dinos again, you could have scrap dinos, put Orcus engine in there, and there is some potential there, there is something there. But again, is this potential enough? Is it something that can break into our current climate, our current competitive scene? I really don't know. And I think I think it's been power crept, honestly. I think it's been outclassed. I think even if um, the cards are to come out of our uh, ban list that have been banned like like Harp Horror, I still feel like August Legacy ain't gonna do anything with a scrap dino put in. And then finally we have Crusadia Synchro with combos. Now this is for example the deck, the version of you know potentially that I can see having a lot of potential in the future. Uh, given the fact that we still have healthy Fibrax, given the fact that we have a new card that's common that is common and available to us, which is Cupid Pitch, that has that has great search targets like Hop Yard and uh, Creation Resonator, to name two cards which are fantastic search targets. So Crusadia Synchro Combos definitely, Crusadia Synchro Combo deck definitely looks like it's looking very attractive right now. It's looking very appealing and has a very high ceiling, very high whatever. Especially given the fact that you know we also have Sword Soul as well. There's a lot of potential here, a lot of um, things that can be done here. We don't need to break the, the bank here in terms of potential. We could mix it with Sword Souls, we could go with 10 Yi. There's a high ceiling here, loads of potential, loads of things. Again, it is to be stated, it is to be seen whether this is going to, whether it can have an impact in our current uh, meta scene is yet to be seen. But out of all the versions of Seven Legacies at the moment that stands a chance, uh, for uh, de deconstructing the deck and rebuilding it, Crusadia Synchro Legacy definitely has a chance here. There's a high, it's got a high ceiling. It's got num numerous potential ways that it can go. So many uh, decision trees and avenues. There is definitely something special here. And if we get more support next year at the beginning of the year with you know Bark that comes out in the beginning of the year, who knows? There is potential here. There is something special here. So that uh, is yet to be seen. And you know, that's about it. Yeah. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. Um, hopefully I'll see, hopefully you know, you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel. And uh, wait a couple of minutes and you'll, seconds, sorry, and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel. Hope to see you soon and thank you.